Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be bringing you an exciting colour grade but we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop in uh, today's video. I'm going to bring out a, a Lightroom tutorial where we do the same thing but in Adobe Lightroom that will be out either in a few days or in a week or so so keep your eyes peeled for that um, but in the meantime we're going to be showing you how to do a cross-processed color grade using Adobe Photoshop. Now I've gone ahead and I've created a preset pack or a Photoshop actions pack of 20 cross processed actions. You can see them all here. There are 20 actions. So I'm going to be showing you how those work. I'm going to give you an example of them right now. Okay, so the first thing you do is you install the cross process pack and you just open up your actions here and you come down to uh, one, pick whichever one you want. I'm going to give a three. Uh, and all you do is click play and wait for the action to load and there you go you have your action installed now you can see this is a very vibrant sort of color grade on this photo I kind of like the way this looks it's slightly less film look but it's it's kind of introduced a bit of grain and it's definitely got that cross process vibe to it uh, if I just delete uh, this load of actions now and I can show you this one so this is the cross process 2 preset if I click play you can see just how quickly you can uh, make this style on your photos just really quickly just with a click of one button so you can go ahead and get that from our website I'm just gonna show you one more so you guys can get an idea of what we're gonna be doing in today's video but in the meantime it would be great if you could go follow me on Instagram my Instagram is Sebastian underscore JWB uh, go follow me over there and like some of my photos I've just released this new one just this minute so uh, go check me out over there it'd be awesome to see you guys over there and also my brother which is Matthew underscore GKB he's got very different styles for me but go follow us on Instagram that would be awesome Okay, so we're going to be starting off with this photo actually. So we're going to come down to the create new adjustment layer and we're going to work our way from the top to the bottom. So first of all, we want to come to our curves uh, and each of these I will be clipping to my layer below it. So we're going to be editing the before photo. So I'm just going to clip all of these by pressing alt on my keyboard and just clipping it to the layer below it. Now you can come into your RGB and first of all we're going to be uh, just kind of introducing a slight bit of contrast. You don't want to do too much contrast because we actually introduce a lot more contrast as this video goes on. Now you can also introduce fade because we're trying to go for a film look. Fade can sometimes look quite cool uh, in these cross process looks. So some of these cross process actions do have fade, some of them don't. You'd have to play around and see what you get. Um, now if you guys do enjoy this video it would be great if you could subscribe and like it and check out some of the other videos on our channel we have loads of videos like this um, but now we're going to come into the red primary on the curves uh, and all we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple S curve with the red primary so like this you can see already how we're beginning to get this uh, very different look going on. Uh, and obviously this is going to introduce contrast as well, but it's going to introduce more color contrast, and especially in the reds right now. Um, so we're going to go for that in the red primer. You can mess around a bit more. I'm going to do this fairly quickly. It depends if you want more red in the highlights. You can see here if I move the point towards the steeper part of this uh, little curve here, um, I will get more reds in the image. So I'm going to sort of push it this way a bit. I like a bit of red in the image. Uh, I'm then going to come to greens, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to click here drag up to introduce some greens into the highlights and then drag down to reduce the greens in the shadows and that's going to give us a nice sort of purple vibe to this image. Now you can see why I said to you don't input too much um, contrast in the RGB curve because already this photo is looking incredibly contrasted. In fact if I just turn off this layer here you can see what it looked like before and after. We've just created three curves and already we have a load of contrast in this image so we may need to go back to the RGB channel and adjust that slightly. Okay, so I've had to go back and really quickly just sort of sort the red and green primary out. I accidentally deleted them by pressing Command Z too many times. So this image may look slightly different to what it did a second ago. Um, so excusing that, the blue primary curve is going to be slightly different to our green primary and also our red primary. You can see they're both S curves. You can do that as well in the blue primary if you want, just by dragging up the highlights and dropping the shadows. There's nothing wrong with that. You can see the image does look quite nice. And in fact, in one of our other preset packs, there is a preset which does this um, just to give a really nice look, especially if you're doing portraits. This sort of idea for the curves works really nicely. Now, the other thing you can do is do the inverse of that S curve. Um, where you decrease the blue highlights and increase the blues in the shadows and here you can really see we're getting that cross process look that sort of strange um, difference in colors that you've got going on here okay so the other thing we can do is get this top point here drag that down to there and drag the bottom point up like that so you basically have a straight line it's kind of hard to see but it's just a straight line going through that center point there uh, so I'm going to leave the curve alone for now and we're going to come back down to the adjustments layer 
Oh, let's just reclip this to this layer. It doesn't matter if it's clipped too much, but I just like to do it so I know which one we're editing. Uh, then you come to this point here, the adjustments, and we come down and we're going to select color balance. Um, in this photo, we can, so you can see here, if I mess with the cyan, we make the image sort of more teal, or we can make it more red. I'm going to introduce a bit more red into the image. I kind of like the purple look that we're getting in this image now. Um, then you can add more magenta, or you can add more green. I personally don't like green as a color, so I tend to stick away from the greens. Um, I don't particularly like magenta either, but I think it works better for this image. Now you can see we're really going over the top of these edits. This is very much what cross-processed does to your images. It's very over-edited, um, but it is a very cool look, and it can look like a sort of film look as well, if that's what you're going for. And then we're going to introduce a little bit of blues as well into the shadows. Now, you guys can go ahead and copy these numbers if you want, but just remember that you will actually need slight different numbers for each photo. Um, which is part of the reason why I made 20 cross-processed actions, just so you can test out and try whichever ones you think are best. Okay, we're then going to come down to black and white, and with black and white, you can see all it does here is it just basically turns the image completely black and white. And you can see this slider here is just the brightness of each individual color channel. So I'm going to leave it on the default numbers. You can see here it's 40, 60, 40, 60, 20, 80, um, which uh, we're going to leave on there. We're going to clip this to the layer below, and then we're going to come down to the blending options, and we are simply going to come down to soft light. Oops, that's the wrong one. That's hard light, which kind of looks quite funky. Uh, but we're going to come to soft light, and we're going to leave that there. And this is just going to introduce a lot more color contrast into the image. You can see, again, like I said at the beginning, we are going to end up having a lot of contrast in this image, so not to put too much in your original tone curve. So if I turn that off and on again, you can see what it's done to the image. I kind of made the image slightly cooler, so we might just come onto the opacity and bring that back so we don't edit it too much, but then only 40% uh, kind of edit, I think, works quite nicely. Um, so I'd like to do that on these cross-processed. Uh, I think it kind of brings out the colors a lot more. Uh, we're going to come back to adjustments and we're going to come onto uh, yeah photo filter for the next one. And all photo fil filter is going to do is we can choose a color. So here you can see the image has gone slightly more orange. We're going to choose a color and we are then going to overlay that onto the image. So here we've gone for orange. Again, I don't think orange is going to work for this image, so I'm going to go for a sort of purple color, mostly because that's the color we've got going on in the hair, and I think it's going to complement quite nicely. Alternatively, we can go for something like a red. Um, I'm actually going to stick with this pink. Again, you can copy the, the color if you want to, um, and each of these actions here do have different colors, and they all look slightly different in different ways. You can see on our website the befores and afters. So I'm going to turn that off, and you can then, you have two choices. One, leave it on normal and just drop the opacity down a little bit, let's say to 40%, just to see what that looks like. Oops, if I put that back on 40%, uh, you can see what that looks like. It just sort of takes away a little bit of the green, adds a little bit more color into the image. Now, the other thing you can do is put the opacity onto 100%, come down to soft light again, and overlay that onto the image again. And again, we're just adding a lot more contrast into the image, so we can come onto opacity and bring that back a little bit if you want to. On some of these, I've put soft light on some of the photo filters, again, because I just kind of like the effect that it gives these photos. So that's it for photo filter. We're almost done now, actually. We're kind of getting there quite quickly. Uh, the final thing you really kind of want to do is come to color lookup. Uh, and I really like the effect that you can get with these. Color Lookup basically is going to bring up a load of different LUTs that are already preloaded into Photoshop. And I'm hoping that a lot of these LUTs you guys will have already as well. So basically, the ones I like to stick to are Kodak and the Fuji ones. Uh, you can see if I go for Kodak 2395, it gives a very nice sort of pastel look to this image. And you can just work your way through until you get something that you like the look of. Currently, I'm thinking either Kodak 5, uh, 3510 or 2395. Uh, the uh, Fuji ones are also quite nice as well. Uh, but basically, it's just a matter of personal preference. Whichever one you think you should go for, uh, just go for and put on your image. Really, you can see the difference these um, little LUTs make your image. I'm going to stick with this one. Uh, I'm going to come here and I'm just going to link it to the layer below and we're probably almost done. Now, two things you can do again, you can drop the opacity on this just to kind of have less of an effect on the image so you can see what it looked like before and the after. Uh, alternatively, put the opacity up to 100%, come down to soft lights again and apply that onto the image, and we have yet more contrast in our image. You can see the before and the after. In this case, I'm not going to put soft light on it, just because I think this adds a nice little bit of fade into the highlights, and I kind of like the soft pasta look it's giving, but I think it's a bit over the top, so I am going to drop that down to 60% or 58% here. The numbers don't matter too much. 
Now we're basically done. There is one final thing we can do that is more of a contrast popper. You'll really notice I'm saying contrast a lot in this image, uh, in this process, but we are really introducing loads of color contrast. We are really popping these colors and we're having very, very vibrant different colors in each image. So you can see on the before and after images of this cross process pack, the little, little the effects you can create to these images like you saw at the beginning. Um, now the gradient map is the final one we're going to introduce. So coming down to gradient map, uh, press alt on your keyboard and again you see it's created it black and white and you can see actually this does work quite nicely in black and white just because we've introduced a lot of contrast into the image. But again for the black and white ones come up to blending options, come all the way down and select soft light and again you can see that has really introduced a lot of contrast. Now from what I can remember the actual cross process pack that I made for this one, specifically I think this is cross process 2, I didn't actually introduce the gradient map or anything like in any extra contrast in there as well using things like levels and also the exposure and brightness and contrast. I didn't introduce any more of that into this image just because this image is quite contrasting, very easy to overdo. But just for argument's sake, I'm going to show you guys what you can do. So make sure that you don't forget you can add a gradient map just to introduce a little bit more contrast. And I've done that ever so slightly. So that is basically it for today's tutorial. I don't want to go on for ages and ages waffling through uh, all of these different things, but you can if you want to mess around with a few more of these. Uh, one thing that is kind of cool to do is you can come onto gradient map uh, and you can choose different colors for gradient map, which can look quite effective. You can come onto the brightness and contrast, the curves. Um, and levels is also a good one if your image is too dark, just to kind of introduce a little bit more um, just to kind of brighten up your image slightly and also exposure. But you can mess around, you can really play around for ages, which is kind of why a lot of people do edit on Photoshop, is because there is a lot more you can do. But don't forget, you can go check out the cross process pack on our website. There is a load of information on it up there. Um, but I hope you did enjoy this video, guys. I hope it was useful. If you guys want to see a Lightroom version of this, don't forget to leave a like down below and also a comment letting me know, and I'll try and bring that one out as soon as possible. Uh, but that's it, guys. I'll hope to see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.